या वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन हाउ आर यू ऑल एवरी वन फाइन एज वेल एज सेफ एम आई राइट फर्स्ट कैन यू गिव मी कैन यू इन्फॉर्म मी वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल और नॉट whether my voice is audible or not can you respond so that we can start many of you have joined rani sharma good morning sunil good morning Sai Ramesh, good morning. Varun, good morning. Krishna, I think Swati. I am just finding out everyone. I O C, very good morning. Yeah, is it audible? Now, everyone. we are here to discuss the amendment related to ca final financial reporting paper which will be applicable for may 2022 attempt may 22 attempt correct means may 22 and onward attempt we can say so even though you are writing your exam for onward attempt means november etc then also this amendment will be applicable for you all now from examination point of view there are three major amendments the first amendment which i will say is chapter number 1 as per my book chapter number 1 that is conceptual framework for financial reporting under india previously there used to be one chapter framework for the preparation of preparation and presentation of financial statement under india accounting standard now that that chapter is totally removed and i will say revise and now that chapter become conceptual framework for financial reporting under indian accounting standard now for this already a amendment video means this chapter is already included in our amendment video in youtube so you can find out a link of the video for this amendment chapter in the description of the video or you can find out in the playlist i will give the link in the description of the this video about this chapter i hope you have already listened the this chapter from my youtube channel correct so this chapter already has been discussed so today we are not discussing anything about this chapter correct now this as per this chapter is concerned this is i want to just inform you that this chapter is very basic chapter even though you just read the chapter you will be able to understand so if you don't have time so you can read the entire chapter by your own you will be able to understand nothing to worry about this chapter got it now whether question will come or will not come that i don't know correct now but any amendment chapter any chapter which is amended is always important from examination point of view that you all know correct now second amendment which will be discussed in today's lecture is the amendment to schedule 3 of companies act that is division 2 of schedule 3 of course there is some amendment division 1 also but as we all know that division 1 is not in ca final syllabus therefore we are not discussing right now any amendment related to division 1 of schedule 3 so we'll be discussing all those amendment which are related to division 2 of schedule 3 of companies act got it now there are some amendment which are in this uh, division 2 of schedule 3 which are very important from examination point of view and this amendment will be important for one of the chapter that chapter you might be knowing that analysis of financial statement you remember that chapter analysis of financial statement normally 
in exam they give a 10 marks question from that chapter minimum 10 marks question in that chapter they will give you incorrect balance sheet incorrect balance sheet and that balance sheet need to be corrected as per the requirement of india and as per the requirement of schedule 3 of companies act so all these amendment might be asked in that might be asked for any question related to that chapter so what are that amendment we need to refer right now understood normally this amendment is because of amendment in caro so because caro is amended to, to reflect the all the amendment whatever has been done in caro the schedule 3 division 2 is also amended got it let us discuss one by one each amendment got it yes i will also take ca into amendment don't worry today let me take ca final amendment i'll come with ca into amendment also don't worry about that so what are the amendment which is related to schedule 3 of division 2 the first point is for promoters shareholding now we'll dis we'll just discuss what was given in what was given in existing requirement means as per the previous schedule 3 division 2 and what is the amendment so existing requirement there was no such requirement to give the disclosure about promoter shareholding means as per pre means as per existing requirement means before amendment there was no disclosure requirement for promoter shareholding but now as per the amendment under schedule 3 what they want a company shall disclose the shareholding of promoter shareholdings of promoter you all know what is the meaning of promoter if you don't know so what clarification has been given promoter means promoter as defined under companies act so you all know about companies that go and refer the definition of promoter there i am not right now explaining the meaning of promoter you all know who are the promoter correct so we need to disclose the shares held by the promoter at the end of the year so what are the shares number of shares held by each and every promoters need to be disclosed whatever they held at the end of the year so we need to write down promoters name number of shares held at the end of the year percentage of total shares what is the percentage of total shares they are holding and percentage change during the year means any percentage change during the year means opening balance closing balance whatever the percentage change there that we need to also disclose so this is first amendment however i don't know whether this type of information will be important from examination point of view or not because even though it is an amendment whether this will be asked in exam or will not be asked that i don't know correct but this is one amendment i hope you have understood second amendment is related to statement of changes in equity statement of changes in equity if you remember we used to draw statement of changes in equity two part a and b in a we used to write down equity share capital in b we used to write down other equity correct now previously under a we used to write down ki what is the opening balance means what is the balance at the beginning of the year then changes and then closing balance means balance at the end of the year only this much correct but as per the requirement of india any changes due due to due to restatement Uh, due to restatement of correct means due to restatement of the item in the financial statement due to correction of error need to be also stated as per india study because of that reason some amendments were required so now what they said for equity share capital now additionally following disclosures are required changes in equity share capital due to prior period error so due to prior period error can i say a uh, retrospective restatement is required so that was not given in point number a it was given in point number b but it was not given in point number a so now what they are saying if first you write down opening balance then you write down any changes any changes due to prior period error then first calculate restated balance restated balance at the beginning of the at the beginning of the year and then what are the changes during the year and that will become closing balance that will become closing balance understood so they have just inform you that they have just they have just added that this two column will be added so what is the first column changes in equity share capital due to prior prior error 
and the restated balance at the beginning of current reporting period under so this this changes was done as per the requirement of india sa however same thing was given in point number b point number b is this for other equity it was already mentioned but for a it was not mentioned got it understood this changes understood correct so this might be a important change however can i say even though it was not given as per the existing requirement but even though if we apply india sa so automatically it will be covered automatically it will be covered but now it is mentioned in division 2 of schedule 3 got it then point number 3 this is very important from examination point of view trade receivable trade receivable so as per existing requirement means before amendment right now means before amendment trade receivable are sub classified as only considered good and secured consider good and unsecured and then trade receivable which have significant increase in trade risk and trade receivable credit impaired i hope you remember this ki as per the existing requirement means before amendment we used to classify trade receivable as consider good secured consider good unsecured trade receivable which have significant increase in credit risk and trade receivable which are credit impaired got it but now as per amendment requirement as per amendment now they have also asked you to give the aging schedule which will be as under so now as per amendment they want aging schedule means we need to give the age of trade receivable aging schedule and that will be given for undistributed undisputed trade receivable consider good means now we need to also classify trade receivable into undisputed and disputed undisputed and disputed you can see undisputed undisputed trade receivable consider good undisputed trade receivable which have significant increase in trade risk undisputed trade receive trade receivable credit impaired then disputed trade receivable consider good disputed trade receivable which have significant increase in trade risk disputed trade receivable credit impaired understood this point so it now they have also said that now trade receivable will be also categorized into undisputed and disputed undisputed receivable consider good undisputed receivable which have significant increase in trade risk undisputed trade risk trade receivable credit impaired then disputed 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 understood and then we need to keep aging means outstanding for the following period from the due date of payment means what is the outstanding period and outstanding period will be calculated from the due date of payment from the due date of payment so outstanding for the following period from the due date of payment so less than 6 month less than 6 month 6 month to 1 year then 1 year to 2 year then 2 year to 3 year and then more than 3 year then total understood it means we need to classify it based on the aging so aging is what less than 6 month then 6 month to 1 year then 1 year to 2 year then 2 year to 3 year and then more than 3 year understood this aging schedule may be asked in exam may be asked in exam important this is important correct got it now there is one clarification given that that if no due date of payment is specified in the contract it might happen there are some contract in which due date of payment is not specified then what they said disclosure shall be given from the date of transaction then date of payment will be as means date of transaction will be assumed to be the date of payment date of transaction will be assumed to be the date of payment understood in this case i hope you have understood this so this is one important amendment from examination point of which i feel they may ask in exam in analysis of financial statement chapter can you repeat with me so now we need to give aging schedule and we'll divide the trade receivable in two part undisputed and disputed and then it will be classified as undisputed trade receivable consider good undisputed trade is trade receivable which have significant increase in credit risk undisputed trade receivable which are credit impaired similar for disputed trade receivable aging will be given for less than 6 months 6 month to 1 year 1 year to 2 year 2 year to 3 year more than 3 year than total got it yes sir then other financial asset this is also a one important amendment which is important from examination point of view now as per the 
previous requirement i should not say existing requirement because when i will say existing you will be confused so as per the previous requirement now i'll say as per the previous requirement okay so as per the previous requirement we used to disclose security deposit under the head loan means if you remember under financial asset we used to write down investment investment then we used to write down trade receivable then loan and then other financial asset other financial asset so as per the previous requirement they are saying sir where to show data within due date means no this is the outstanding means outstanding from the due date of payment this aging schedule has been given for the outstanding for the from the due to due date of payment understood now correct sir where to show data within due date acha they are saying within due date means till now due date has not came suppose this is the due date so this is the date of payment date of payment correct so we are calculating this outstanding from this date now if the due date has not means if this due date has not came then of course you can make one more column that is not given in this aging schedule that you can give if you want to give are you able to understand yes sir yes sir then coming to point number 4 just try to understand what they want to say ki as per previous requirement the security deposit was required to disclose under loan means we used to disclose under loan security deposit but now as per the amendment this security deposit will be shown under other financial asset why because can a security deposit is actually not a loan so there was some miss i will say there was some doubt in the industry ki why deposit are shown in loan so one amendment was now now one amendment has came ki now security deposit will be shown under other financial asset under other financial asset correct yes sir so now as per the amendment requirement the amendment require that other financial asset shall include other financial asset means the deposit will be shown under other financial asset other financial asset means it can be current it can be non current because can is it can be non current it can be current depending upon the situation correct yes sir but any deposit will be shown under other financial asset any security deposit will be shown under other financial asset so what they said other financial asset shall include security deposit then bank deposit with more than 12 month maturity means for this there was no there is no amendment bank deposit with more than with uh, more than 12 month maturity previously also we used to show under other financial asset also means any fixed deposit with more than 12 month maturity previously also we used to show under other financial asset now also will be shown under other financial asset and other to be specified means now other now it means it means just try to understand so it will be shown under other financial asset other financial asset this should be correct have you understood this point correct so can is now deposit will not be shown under the loan the security deposit will be shown under other financial asset this is one amendment have you understood this point yes sir come into next point loans and advance loans and advance now as per the previous requirement as per the previous requirement whether it is loan or advance it can be loan as well as advance so schedule 3 previous requirement schedule 3 required disclosure of loan to related party and advances to related party separately we used to disclose loan to related party separately advances to related party separately understood correct but now as per amendment requirement as per amended requirement now what they are saying that any loans and advances which are in the nature of loan granted to promoter if the loan is granted to promoter or director or key management personnel or any other related party as defined under companies act as defined under companies act 
either severally or jointly with any other person that are repayable on demand or without specifying any terms of period or repayment with any loans and demand of whatever nature if that loan has been granted to promoter directors key management person or any other related party then we need to disclose this type of the borrower promoter directors kmp related party amount of loan or advance in the nature of loan outstanding means what is the amount of loan outstanding and the percentage of total loan advance in the nature of loan what is the percentage of loan outstanding that need to be also disclosed so this now need to be disclosed in as this table so previously we used to only disclose the loan given to related party and advance given to related party but now this information is also required to be disclosed i don't know whether this will be important from examination point of view or not but it is one amendment got it yes sir then point number 6 revaluation of property plant and equipment and intangible asset as per previous requirement i hope you remember that we need to give a reconciliation of gross and net carrying amount of each class of asset at the beginning and at the end of reporting period showing any addition disposal acquisition to business combination and other adjustment and related depreciation and impairment loss or any impairment loss reversal means a reconciliation of gross carrying amount and net carrying amount at the beginning and at the end of the year need to be provided we have discussed this in this case in this there is one one item which was missing that any reconciliation which is required due to revaluation of asset can you say as per india 16 as per india 38 revaluation model can be also applied whenever there is a revaluation so can is the gross carrying amount will change due to revaluation but it was not given in this disclosure so that point i think it was by mistake omitted which is now included in the disclosure so what now they want to say that upon revaluation of pp and intangible as a company in addition to above item of reconciliation is required to make disclosure with respect to amount of changes due to revaluation but if the changes is 10% or more in the aggregate of the net carrying amount of each class of pp and intangible asset means due to revaluation if the changes is 10% or more in the aggregate of the net carrying amount then revaluation need to be disclosed means the changes due to revaluation need to be disclosed separately means we need to give a reconciliation for that revaluation also got it yes sir correct means simple opening balance plus addition plus any upward revaluation that need to be also given minus any downward revaluation that need to be also given got it yes sir further they have also asked you to disclose whether the revaluation is based on the valuation by registered valuer as defined under rule 2 of companies registered valuers and valuation rules 2017 means as per the rule 2 of this company rules they have defined who are the registered valuers so whether that valuation means the fair value has been defined as per the as per registered valuer which has been defined under company's rules that need to be also disclosed however india 16 india 38 says that the values of miss fair value should be come should be determined by any independent value which has some specified qualification so as per india 16 as per india 38 we used to disclose that point but it was not mentioned under section 3 division 2 so now this point has been added you need to also disclose that whether the whether the valuation has been done by registered valuer as defined under company's rules understood yes sir the similar information has been added for the fair value of investment property we all know that as per india 40 we apply only cost model correct however as per india 40 we disclose fair value of such property fair value of such property now what is the amended requirement that if the fair value need to be disclosed whether that fair value has been measured by the registered valuer as defined under company rules that need to be also disclosed so what they are saying as per existing requirement this in schedule 3 there was no disclosure requirement on whether the fair value of investment property is based on the valuation by registered valuer or not however india's 40 has given a dis disclosure that whenever fair value is required to disclose means we need to disclose fair value of investment property so we need to also disclose that whether it has been determined by the qualified valuer or not independent valuer having a specified qualified or not that is required as per india's 40 but 
Now, as per amended requirement under in, under Section 3 Division 2, they have added that companies are required to disclose whether the fair value of investment property is based on the valuation by registered valuer as defined under Rule 2 of Companies Companies Rule 2017. Got it? Correct. Now, I don't know whether this is important from examination point or not because normally this type of disclosure they don't ask in exam. Correct now. So, I don't know whether these are important. Point number 6 and point number 7 is important or not important that I know. Don't know. So, wherever it is important, I am writing, I am mentioning important. Wherever it is not important, I am not mentioning anything because it may be asked also. So, correct? Yes, sir. Then, coming to trade payable. Trade payable, of course, an important amendment is there. Trade payable, there is one important amendment. Ki as per previous requirement, we need to only disclose the trade payable into two parts means into two part what is the amount due of micro enterprise and small enterprise means SMME and other enterprise means we need to only disclose the amount means under trade paper we need to disclose trade amount due to MSME amount due to other party only this much but no aging was given now now as per amendment requirement they say that for trade payable due for payment following aging schedule shall be given you can see particular amount due to MSME, amount due to others, outstanding for the following period from the due date of payment, less than one year, now it is less than one year, six month not criteria, less than one year, one year to two year, two year to three year, more than three year, understood, so here less than one year, starting from less than one year, one year, two year, two year to three years, more than three years and total, got it, have you understood? So this is also important from examination point of view. They may give this type of information which require disclosure in that chapter analysis of financial statement. So this might be an important because this is one amendment. They may ask this type of disclosure. So what is the, what is the amendment? You need to prepare one table. They you write on trade payable due to MSME, due to others, then outstanding for the following period from the due date of payment, less than one year, one year to two year, two year to three year, and more than three year, then total. Got it? Yes, sir. This also you have understood. Correct. Of course, here also MSME, others, and then also disputed dues and disputed dues to others. This also is required. This means it is undisputed. Undisputed. This is also undisputed. Okay. So, undisputed MSME, undisputed others, then disputed dues MSME, disputed dues others. Correct. Got it? Yes, sir. This also you have understood. Now, point number nine. This is the very important, very important because this is required for some other chapters also. Means in financial instrument chapter, the previous requirement was different. Now the requirement has been changed. So if if you have taken class from me and from any other faculty, so we used to disclose current maturities of long term borrowing. Current maturities from long term borrowing we used to disclose under other financial liability. If you remember, correct. So. As per previous requirement, we used to disclose current maturities of long term borrowing under what? Under current liability, but under current liability, under other financial liability. Understood? Means, suppose there is some borrowing, there is some borrowing, and the amount due was 10 lakh. So, we used to find out what is the current maturities. Current maturities means what is payable within 12 months, suppose you were like. So, what is long term maturities it become 9 lakh so this we used to disclose under borrowing borrowing under what borrowing under financial liability under non current liability correct and this we used to disclose where this we used to disclose where under other financial liability under current liability correct then I used to say, I also don't know why they have said other financial liability that I have said in the class that I don't understand why it is under financial liability. But now they have amended it. Now it will not be disclosed under other financial liability. It will be shown under borrowing only. Borrowing but short term borrowing. Short term borrowing is under current liability. Whatever borrowing you mentioned that becomes short term borrowing. Correct. So this is one amendment which is very important from examination point of view. So now current maturities of long term borrowing shall be disclosed under short term borrowing separately. namely current maturities of long term borrowing so previously we used to disclose current maturities of long term borrowing current maturities of long term borrowing where under other financial other financial liability but now we'll disclose under short term borrowing under financial liability got it have you understood this point bolo 
Have you understood this point? Any doubt about this? Correct. This this is one important amendment which will be important from examination point of view. Got it? Yes, sir. Then lease liability. This is also important. Means whenever you are doing, whenever you are doing in days one one six. So of course for that we used to disclose lease liability. But as per previous requirement, there was no nothing was given under the face on the face of balance. Therefore, what we used to do is for lease liability we used to calculate two part. Ki how much current portion and how much long how much non current portion this non current portion we used to disclose under long term borrowing under financial liability and current portion we used to disclose under other financial liability as same thing whatever we used to do for borrowing but now here also now here also this current portion will be shown under current liability this non current portion will be shown under non current liability but a specific heading a specific line item has been added on in on the face of balance sheet means now if i want to disclose just try to understand if i inform you about the format coming to the format you can see now this is equity and liability so now they have added financial liability they have added one line item after borrowing you can see financial liability then borrowing then lease liability then trade payable if previously it was borrowing then trade payable now one line item has been added after borrowing under Financial liability, both under current and non-current. Understood? So financial liability, borrowing, lease liability. So this will be right on long-term portion. Means long-term borrowing, means long-term maturities. And under current liability, you can see financial liability, borrowing, lease liability. This will be current maturities of finance lease obligation of finance lease obligation. Got it? Have you understood this point? This point have you understood? Yes, sir. So this is also important. I hope you have understood this point. Correct. So this is also important lease liability. So now this lease liability will be shown on the face of balance sheet. What I am saying on the face of balance sheet directly. Correct. On the face of balance sheet we write on non-current liability. We write on current liability. Under non-current liability we write on financial liability. Here also we write on financial liability. Under financial liability first we write on borrowing. Here also we write on first borrowing. This is long-term borrowing. This is short-term borrowing. Then we write on lease liability. Then we write on lease liability. Understood? Got it? Yes, sir. Then details of Benami property held. Sir, what is the meaning of Benami property? Do you know about Benami property? Without any name, we suppose we purchase any property in the name of other party. It's not in our name. In the name of other party. Normally we do. We purchase some property, but not in our name. We purchase property in the name of other party. Correct? Now that is known as Benami property. Correct? Or it might happen that we purchase some property in our name, but the amount is paid by some other party. It is understood. So it is bought with Benami property. What is the meaning of Benami property? Benami property is bought by a person in the name of another person. What is the meaning of Benami property? It is purchased, purchased by a person in the name of. In the name of other person. Normally, it happens. We, I have purchased one property in the name of my wife, in the name of my father, in the name of my brother. That become Benami property. Understood? Correct? In the name of other person. In the name of other person. So purchased by a party in the name of other party. That is known as Benami property. So previously, there was no such no disclosure was required for Benami property held. But now, now when any proceeding has been initiated or pending against the company for holding any Benami property under the Benami Transaction Provision Act and the rules made there, and the company shall disclose the following. However, I don't know whether this is important from examination point of view or not because this type of information might not be given in the examination question. Correct, but in given, we should write down details of such property, amount thereof, detail of any beneficiary. If property is in the books, then reference to the item in the balance sheet. If if you are holding such property in the name of other party, then it is in our books. If the property is not in the books, means we means some other party has purchased the property in our name. It is quite possible, yes sir. Then the facts shall be stated with reason. Correct now. Nature of proceeding, status of same companies views on the same. These are the some information which is required to be disclosed. 
which is required to be disclosed. Got it? This also you have understood? Any doubt? Benami property held you understood? Yes, sir. Then point number two, re, point number two, relationship with stock of companies. What is the meaning of stock of companies? Any companies whose name has been removed from registrar of companies that is known as what? Stock of companies. So previously, as per previous requirement, there was no such disclosure required with the relationship with stock of companies. But now, when the company has any transaction with the company stock of under section 248 of Companies Act or section 560 of Companies Act, the company shall disclose the following details. Means any transaction, the, if the company has any transaction with the stock of company, then following disclosures are required. Name of stock of company, nature of a transaction with such company, balance outstanding, relationship with the stock of companies, relationship means that stock of companies, associate, joint venture or whatever, that need to be disclosed. Nature of transaction, investment, re receivable, payable, that need to be also disclosed. Now, I don't know whether this is important or not important, but it's one amendment, amendment which is required to be done. Got it? Yes, sir. Then point number 13, capital WIP and intangible asset under development. As per previous requirement, there was no disclosure to be given for capital WIP and intangible asset under, develop, under development. But now, for capital WIP and intangible asset under development, following aging schedule is required to be given. Following aging schedule is required to be given. Means we need to find out any capital WIP or intangible asset under development. So we need to divide it, this into two category project any project which are in progress any project which are temporarily suspended means it might happen there are some capital WIP for which development has been suspended there may be some capital WIP or intangible asset under development which are under progress which are under progress so we need to categorize in two categories project which are in progress and project which are temporarily suspended then amount of capital WIP for a period of less than one year one year to two year, two year to three years, or more than three years. This need to be disclosed. Got it? Simple. But in this one more disclosure is required for any capital WIP or intangible asset under development whose completion is overdue. Means whose completion is overdue. Suppose you plan that it will be completed in three years, but it is not yet completed. Means it is overdue. Whose completion is overdue or has exceeded its cost compared to its original plan, or where the cost of where the total cost is exceeded as planned. So following disclosures will be required. Following completion schedule shall be given. Understood? Correct. So this is required for any any project which are overdue, which are overdue, whose completion is overdue or whose expenses will be more than as this which total estimated cost is more as planned. Understood? Yes, sir. So in that case, we need to find, we need to disclose project one, project two, project three like this to be come and we need to write on to be completed in means when you are supposed to complete in means it will be an expected time to be completed in less than one year, one year to two year, two year to three year, more than three year. That means that information is disclosed. I don't know whether this disclosure is important or not. Not important. Norm, not important. But normally this type of question they don't ask in exam. Correct? Yes, sir. Then title deed of immovable property not held in the name of the company. So any title deed, title deed of immovable property not held in the name of the company. It might happen it is held in the name of some other party director, etc. So that requires also disclosure. So what previously there was no such requirement. Now there is a requirement disclose. Disclose. The information about title deed of immovable property not held in the name of the company. So what they say, the company shall provide the details of all immovable property other than property where the company is the lessee and the lease agreement are duly executed in favor of lessee. Means other than when company is a lessee. Correct now. Means we need to ignore about the lease transaction. Whose title deed are not held in the name of the company in following format. Why this transaction? Because of course we are using ROU asset, but it is not is it will be in the name of lesser. So they said ignore this transaction. So company shall provide the details of all immovable property whose title deed are not held in the name of the company in the following format. Means we need to find out relevant line item in the balance sheet. Relevant line item means whether it is property planning equipment or whether it is investment property or whether it is what 
uh, any other as any other line item description of item of the property means whether it is land building that you need to mention gross carrying value what is the gross carrying value title deed held in the name of person which person is it is held in the name of which person that you need to disclose whether title deed holder is a promoter director or any relative of promoter director any employee of the promoter director that need to be disclosed property held since which date the property is held the property is held in the name of company from which date that we need to write down reason for not being held in the name of the company reason for not being held in the name of the company the reason need to be given the property held since which date that we need to give reason for not being held in the name of the company sometime what happened there may be a genuine reason we purchase in the name of director but as per substance that is the property is used by the company so as per accounting that property will be disclosed in the balance sheet of what as per accounting is as per india's applying substance over legal document we disclose such property in the balance sheet of balance sheet of company but as special disclosure is now required the title deed of such property is not in the name of the company is the name of some director the name of director is required to be disclosed correct yes sir got it yes sir this type of information is required then undisclosed income undisclosed income means what any income which is disclosed during the tax assessment means income under income tax act we need to do as means income tax officer will do assessment so under that assessment there might be some income which is disclosed that become undisclosed income so previously there was no requirement to disclose any undisclosed income but now as per the amendment requirement what they say company says give the details of any transaction not recorded in the books of account that has been surrendered or disclosed as income during the year in the tax assessment under income tax act understood so any undisclosed income now required disclosure in financial statement understood means in the disclosure requirement got it undisclosed income yes sir then grant or donation receipt this is important grant or donation receipt so can it say for any any companies any companies which are under section 8 of companies act the section 8 companies are getting they will receive grant and can it say for them grant will be a revenue means they that will be their main income so for that reason for any section 8 companies grant will be disclosed under the head revenue from operations so previously there was no such requirement no such disclosure requirement under previous requirement but now as per amendment what they are saying ki section 8 companies are required to make a new new means new insertion in the schedule of revenue from operation for grant or donation receipt because grant or donation receipt will be the income from ordinary activities so income from ordinary activities for that companies will be revenue from operation so they have for that companies grant or donation receipt will be considered as revenue from operation for any other companies which are not section 8 companies for that grant or donation cannot be revenue from operation that will disclose under other income understood have you understood this point yes sir then csr means means csr means corporate social responsibility so of course as per previous requirement we used to disclose means in case of companies covered under section 135 of companies act 2030 disclosure required for the amount of expenditure incurred on csr activities we used to disclose only the amount of expenditure required to them as per csr activity but now now they require following disclosure so the following shall be disclosed with regard to csr activities point number 1 this is point number 1 there is some misprinting amount required to be spent by the company during the year amount required to be spent so you know it is 2% uh, of the average profit yes sir so amount required to be spent amount of expenditure incurred shortfall at the end of the year this require this disclosures are required total of previous year shortfall total of previous year shortfall reason of shortfall nature of csr activities details of related party transaction correct now where a provision is made with respect to a liability incurred by entering into a contract or obligation that need to be also disclosed correct this uh might be important because we have one chapter csr so this might be important that that you can add on this might be important from examination point of view because we have one chapter separate chapter that is csr got it have you understood this point batao have you understood this point yes sir we have understood 
then details of cryptocurrency and virtual currency now with this disclosure one thing will come in your mind ki whether transaction which is in the nature of cryptocurrency you all know about cryptocurrency or virtual currency whether that is a legal transaction or it is not legal transaction as per indian act correct that is one doubt but what they are saying as per the requirement of schedule 3 revised requirement what they are saying ki now whenever a company has traded or invested in cryptocurrency or virtual currency during the financial year the following shall be disclosed so of course previously there was no such requirement this has been added what we need to disclose profit or loss on transaction involving cryptocurrency or virtual currency amount of currency held as at reporting date what is the value of currency held as on reporting date that need to be also disclosed and details or advance from any person for the purpose of trading or investing in cryptocurrency or virtual currency deposit or advance for from any person for the purpose of trading or investing in cryptocurrency or virtual currency that need to be also disclosed got it i don't know whether it is important of course this type of question they will not ask in exam correct now this is important disclosure ratio this might be important for that chapter analysis of financial statement because they may ask you to calculate ratio so as per previous requirement no disclosure was required as per ratio is concerned but now we are supposed to disclose current ratio debt equity ratio debt service coverage ratio correct na return on equity ratio inventory turnover ratio trade receivable turnover ratio trade payable turnover ratio net capital turnover ratio net profit ratio return on capital employed return on invest can it this all ratio you know from ca int only so it might happen now in uh, analysis of financial chapter they may give you some of the information where you need to calculate this ratio and then you need to disclose it correct now however chances are very rare or i think they will give you the percentage means they will give you the ratios correct they will give you the ratio only you need to disclose it correct yes sir then rounding off rounding off now previously whatever rounding off we used to do means we used to do rounding off the amount in the financial statement the rounding off was based on turnover means previously as per previous requirement depending upon turnover the company the figures appearing in the financial statement are required to be rounded off but now this turnover is changed to total income means now as per amendment depending upon total income of the company when is the total income it will include revenue from operation plus other income the so total income is revenue plus other income revenue plus other income of the company the figure appearing in the financial statement are required to be rounded up total income is the sum of revenue from operation other income means if i just want to inform you just try to understand he previously one minute rounding off na one minute what i want to say you can see rounding off there was one criteria what is that yeah you can see now depending upon turnover of the company this is an i mean this is the chapter which has been now amended by me correct total income the company the figures appearing in the financial statement shall be rounded off as below means if the total income is less than 100 crore rupees rounding off will be to the, to the nearest of 100 1000 lakh a million or decimal thereof if the total income is 100 crore or more then it will be rounded off rounding off to the nearest of lakh million or crore or decimal thereof means you can see in the first case we can round off to the 100 1000 also but in case of 100 crore more we can round off to the nearest of lakh million or crore means we cannot do rounding off to the 100 or 1000 understood this was one point i hope you have understood this point so these are all amendment which are important from examination point of view means there are some more important which i am not include there are some more amendment two or three more amendment which is totally not important from examination point of view that i am not discussing this two or three i have left intentionally i have le left but this might be asked in exam this all amendment might be asked in exam and out of that i have also given what is important what is not important understood have you understood this all any doubt correct so can i say as per may 2022 attempt first chapter number 1 is conceptual framework is totally revised already a video has given on that now revise 
schedule three division two is already discussed. There is one more amendment, which is important from examination point of view. The amendment is re related to COVID nineteen related rent concession. COVID nineteen related rent concession. Correct. Now in this, only one amendment is there. That is, you all know about COVID nineteen related rent concession. This para is applicable only for lessee, not for lessor. In this case, there was one point that. Does the rent concession affect only lease payment originally due on or before 30th June 2021? Means when this amendment was came, then there was a viewpoint that then after 30th June 2021 there will be no lockdown. But now we have understood that this COVID-19 situation become the become one normal situation. So they have extended this period by one year. So now it become 30th June 2021. 22. You can change it. 30th June 2022. So this is small amendment. So in this COVID-19, I mean COVID-19 rent concession amendment, there is one more amendment. Is this period has been extended by one year. So we need to apply this condition by saying that whether the rent concession affects only this payment original due originally due on or before 30th June 2022 now. Correct now. So, if the rent concession affects only the the lease payment which was due on or before 30th June 2022, if this condition is satisfied, then can okay, so there is one practical expedient available to what lessee means they they are not supposed to apply modification or accounting. If you remember, have you understood this point? This is small amendment. There is one more amendment, but that is not important from examination point. That is not at all important from examination point of view. The amendment was actually for interest rate benchmark reform. Interest rate benchmark reform. I have not taken this as I don't want to take this point as a discussion right now. But because uh, you are going to become chartered accountant, you should know about this point. This is not at all important from examination point of view because this amendment is not included in ICI revised study material for May 2022 attempt. So can I say due to COVID-19, there is an interest rate benchmark reform. Means the can is a interest rate benchmark reform means there are many many borrowing etc or many lease transactions which was actually based on uh, based on some uh, benchmark rate for example libor rate etc so due to covid 19 this they may there may be some reform in this interest benchmark correct now so the question is that whether this will be considered as modification correct for example previously it was libor plus 2% now reward rate has been changed. Correct now. It is quite means there is maybe some interest rate benchmark means we have changed from reward to some other benchmark reform. Other interest rate benchmark reform. Correct now. It might happen. Correct now. So the question is that whether it will be considered as modification. So one one amendment is there. They are saying that this will not be considered as modification. Means whether it is a lease liability, whether it is a lease transaction, or it, whether it is a uh, financial instrument transaction. Can you say in case of financial instrument transaction, there is a financial asset, financial asset and financial liability. So there also we have done modification. There modification we have done two parts. Where the modification terms are substantially different from original term or not, and then we should decide about extinguishment accounting or modification accounting. So what this amendment says that we will not consider it as modification. We will follow what our normal accounting understood this is one amendment but that this is totally not important from examination point of view therefore this does not require any discussion because this institute has not given any question related to this got it so these are few amendment which are very important one second i will repeat there are three major amendments as per may 2022 exam is concerned one is chapter number one conceptual framework correct conceptual framework for financial reporting under end accounting center already a video has been uploaded that you can refer. Then schedule three division two amendment. This already we have discussed today. And there is one amendment for what for in in the chapter India S one one six related to COVID nineteen rent concession amendment. So their date has been extended by one year. Thirty eight June two thousand twenty one has now become thirty eight June two thousand twenty. I hope you have understood. Now if you have any queries, you can ask me. I'll be I'll be Waiting for your queries. If you have any queries, you can ask me, then I can discuss that query also. Any queries? Everyone. Do you have any queries related to exam, related to preparation, anything?
can we expect complete new revision lecture into for may 2020 you want for which chapter complete revision lecture already acha you are asking revision lectures for may 2022 revision lecture whatever we have done just try to understand for last attempt that you can read for because that was totally very good with very fine lectures only these are some some amendment na so that you can do by own already i have given amendment class and believe me these all amendments are actually not an amendment which will affect your preparation correct now these are very few amendments presentation in schedule 3 these are if, 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 if you are doing separately you will be able to write in exam chapter number 1 is totally changed so that you don't do from there that you do from my recent video which i have uploaded so whatever i have uploaded in the last attempt that is very fine lecture believe me it is very fine lecture many students have given a very good feedback about that chapter you should go to that lecture it will be super it is my guarantee that you will be able to score very good marks with that lectures only correct expected question bank which can yes i know many students are waiting for expected question bank i am receiving believe me every day i am receiving call as well as message from many students means believe me i am getting such a response about expected question so don't worry because expected question will take some time just try to understand i will i can't do copy paste from last attempt normally i do research for that correct i take some time means if you want me to give the last year expected question i can give number can is i need to make a research on that you will see that my every question expected question for every attempt will be different so normally it takes some time it takes some time means normally i give two months before correct now you need to wait for five or six days more it will be coming soon coming so i will not give you date because sometime what happen if i'll give some date you will be waiting for that on that particular date so i'm not committing but it will be soon available with you that i can say that i can say yes then jimla what is this anyone any more doubts you have anyone any more doubts so can i conclude for today everyone can i conclude for today i hope whatever we have discussed this will be helpful for you for your exam i wish you best wishes for the preparation only one suggestion i will say don't panic don't panic in any situation if you are not able to understand any chapter or if you are not able to understand any concept leave that concept or leave that term chapter for the time being correct now understood if it is a concept or if it is a chapter related to fr don't worry you have my telegram group you can ask me i will try my level best to clear your doubt understood this much commitment i can give you all understood so if that concept or chapter related to fr so you can ask me a doubt or you can ask the explanation for that in the telegram group nothing to worry but if any chapter if any concept you are not able to understand right now don't come in panic situation because when you come to panic situation what will happen you will not study only you will leave it correct now it might happen because any student we just try to understand we as a human being are not perfect we can't do everything we need to limit ourselves means how much we can do that much only we can give correct now so just try to find out what in which area you are stronger and in which area you are weak correct the area where you are weak just try to do that much whatever you can do it correct and the area where you are strong try to perform in a better way understood so this is only suggestion i'll give you once again i am saying that this whatever left whatever days are left for examination this is very important for your life don't come into panic situation in any circumstances if you are demotivated if you feel that you want someone guidance please call me i will try to help you and don't worry if you just concentrate on one formula that no chartered and no ca in india are perfect so you as a student can't be perfect only give your best how much you can give and then write the exam pakka surely you will pass thank you very much thank you very much we'll meet once again bye bye take care become ca as soon as possible love you all bye bye